Okay. Good morning to everyone. Uh, today we are doing our next session of the Shikshan project. Shikshan meaning helping people educate, upskill, and uplift. And this project is done by the Mobile Kautan Panchayat. And we are doing this session today on a very particular topic which has been key for many, especially in the health industry. Not many are aware of this topic. And uh, now that we've been stuck with the pandemic, we've been going through this COVID situation, people are wanting to understand more about this. So this session today is really the right fit for many who want to understand more. As part of the session today, what we are going to do is we are going to do uh, an introduction of our guest speaker. Then we're going to talk about biological science, microbiology from a career perspective. What are the advanced courses and what are the advanced certifications which one may want to take up and how that will help from a career perspective. Our guest speaker today will also be sharing her experiences and experiences from her students, participants. Uh, from, their, from what they are doing in real life, and you will get to hear from them today. So that's going to be the interesting part today. And then we talk about opportunities before we give it out for Q&A. Um, before we start the session, uh, just a bit of guidelines that currently all of them will be going on mute so that we can have a better session and a better recorded session. And if anybody wants to ask anything, you can interact over chat and you are allowed to only interact to the host. So please send in your questions to the host and the host will help you get your questions navigated to the guest speaker who will help us answer your queries. We will also be giving out our email ID so that people can understand what's happening. We have, a, if you have any reactions also, you can share it through Zoom. So those are all the things that you might want to do while we do the sessions. And the only ask is thank you for following our guidelines and listening to our guest speaker today. With this, I will hand it over to uh, Alistair to uh, give an introduction of our guest speaker. And then we will talk more. So Alistair, you're on spotlight. Thank you so much, uh, Zenobia. A very good morning. And uh, I just wish you all have a great weekend. Uh, so it's the start of a long weekend for us here in India. So uh, firstly, I'd like to go ahead and welcome all of you to this insightful and uh, really inspiring session uh, on uh, one of the topics that has really you know, catapulted itself into a different realm altogether post the pandemic. So today we have with us Professor Vivian Amonkar, who has 40 plus years of experience in the education sector. She has been, uh, she has served at St. Xavier's College as a vice principal, academics and sciences, and also the head of department of microbiology and the PG department of biotechnology. Today, Professor Vivian will be sharing with us her knowledge on biological sciences, which I'm sure will help pave way to help students and participants to understand the different opportunities available in this area. Today, she will also be sharing few of her student experiences, you know, right from the people who've been there, done that, through their videos. This is going to be one of the most insightful sessions as we see this industry and sector boom. We thank wholeheartedly Professor Vivian for coming forward towards the society and letting and you know letting us know everything about her field. So I want to kick off this session by giving a warm and thankful welcome to Professor Vivian Amonkar. And to take you through all this, uh, I would request uh, Zenobia Miranda to take over. So a big uh, round of applause if you can, or a wave of hand if possible for uh, Professor Vivian. Thank you so much, Professor Vivian. Thank you. I'm, I'm admitting some people and over to you, ma'am. You're on the spotlight and you can share your screen as well. So. Okay. Uh, well, good morning to all of you. And um, I am so happy to interact with uh, youth interested in 
the biological sciences. I've spent 40 years of joyful interaction with groups, very similar to this, when during my teaching days at Xavier's. And so you can imagine I'm in a happy frame of mind just now. Now, I am thankful to the MGP Mobile uh, Gautam Panchayat, Gleason Barreto and his team, and specifically Shikshan, the MGP Education Project with Zenobia Miranda. Uh, she has coordinated this interaction today, and Alistair D'Souza. They are the ones who have answered my many queries, especially Zenobia, and I'm very thankful to all of them. Thank you. Now, uh, the very the most important thing in your scientific journey is to take responsibility to your, for yourself. You and only you are responsible for your future success. Parents, friends may want your good. They want you to be successful, but they can only help. It is you who will really give, um, you know, will crystallize all your dreams, will uh, focus, have a focus on your goals, will shape your attitude towards your future success. So be responsible. Of course, divine intervention is always there, but I'm sure all of you know that we should do our best and only then will God do the rest, okay? So be responsible. Another aspect I would like to highlight is to follow your passion, find your niche. Now for some, this is very easy, but for most, you have to make concerted efforts towards this. Now, uh, prayer does help. For your future endeavors. Okay, now I think I will uh, um, share screen. We can see your screen, ma'am. Yeah. So. So I'm going to talk about this la vast area that is careers in biological sciences and the various skills and attitudes necessary for, a future, uh, for your future success. This is a vast area and I have a little under an hour to cover this. I don't think I will be able to go through all the details, but what I will do is give you a bird's eye view, give you a taste of what this vast field is all about, make you aware of all the various aspects. And then of course you being digital natives can go and explore the internet for further information. I'm more than willing to answer your future queries through email correspondence. Okay, now let's start in understanding your academic journey. It would be a standard 12 from any board with biology as your subject. Now, after 12th biology, you could do go into medicine, dentistry and other allied health fields, but I am going to concentrate on in this presentation on biological sciences where students do an undergraduate degree in biological sciences in an Indian educational institute. Let's start local and then go global. Now, you know, I just want to clarify that when I say global does not necessarily mean that you have to study and work abroad. Today's scenario necessitates that all of us, each one of us, we, um, you know, are global wherever we are, any part of India or any part of the world. So, after 12th standard in biology, the various uh, BSc degree courses available to you are botany, which is the study of plants, zoology that focuses on animal systems, microbiology, that focuses on microbes, bacteria, fungi, viruses, and other microscopic forms. Life science really covers all these systems. Biotechnology does the same, but here the emphasis is on the commercial or the economic aspect. 
You have biochemistry that deals with the metabolic activities of all these systems. Environmental science is self-explanatory. Now, these are some of the major BSc degrees that you would be able to get through the science colleges in India. For forensics, which is basically the uh, study of scientific techniques to detect crime, you have specific institutes of forensics, science. You have one in Mumbai opposite uh, the museum at Kalaba. Okay, so you can, you can get your, B these are the major BSc degrees that you would get through various colleges and universities in India. Now, what do you study while doing these BSc courses? The ones that I've listed are kind of common to most of the degree courses in biological sciences. Uh, however, the system that you study would differ. For example, if you're looking at cell biology, you uh, botany student would study plant cells, whereas a zoology student would study animal cells. The microbiologist would study the cell, microbial cells to a large part and so on. Now, the next subject that most would study would be metabolism, that is the biochemical activities of the various systems. Then you have genetics, you have genes, you have uh, mutations, genetic engineering. Ecology is the study of the interrelationships between living organisms and their environment. In bioinformatics, you have, um, you know, you can you use your IT, okay, you have software that helps you understand biological data for things like um, hereditary diseases or uh, drug. Um, uh, de development. Biostatistics involves the use of statistics for biological data to make it relevant. Then you have biotechnology where you're studying your system and you're studying the economic aspects of it. You have immunology, which studies the immune system. I'm sure all of you are familiar with this in this pandemic days. So immunology is all about antigens, antibodies, vaccines, your immune response, a lot to do with what we're going through today. And then, of course, virology again. Um, I think today there are a lot of um, virology experts in the general population. So these are some of the common uh, subjects that you would study in most of the degree courses I mentioned before. But you have some special courses. So botany students would also study plant systematics. These are just a, some examples of specialized uh, subjects. Plant systematics is the study of the relationships of plants with their with evolution. Entomology would be studied by zoology students, which is a study of insects and their relationship to humans. Microbiology students would also study industrial microbiology. Here you study fermentations, the use of microbes to prepare, uh, you know, ethanol, penicillin, cheese. So that's what industrial microbiology is with fermenters. Medical microbiology would be the study of infectious organisms and the various diseases they cause. Life science students would also study neurobiology, which is a study of the nervous system and how the brain works. And you have developmental biology, which studies growth and development. Now, I've given you a taste of all the various subjects that are involved in biological sciences. You should go onto the net, go to the, the, uh, the syllabi of almost every and any college or university in the world is available. So go look at it, see what each of this means. What does neurobiology mean? What does industrial microbiology really mean? What are the various aspects that you would study if you took up these subjects and see what interests you. Surely there will be something that will interest you or excite you more than something else. And accordingly, you can uh, choose your degree course. Now, after a BSc, what are the, op the future options? One, of course, would be an MSc. Now, here the division between the various, uh, you know, degree courses kind of blurs. For example, a microbiology student, a student who has done a BSc in microbiology could do an MSc in microbiology or life science or environmental science, okay, biotechnology, 
depending upon the university and so on. Then you have various certificate courses like a DMLT, uh, a diploma in medical and lab technology. So you have degree courses in the form of an MSc, various things like nutrition, food technology, there are various MSc options. You have certificate courses. You also have some job opportunities at this point. For example, medical reps in pharmaceutical companies. Then now uh, you know, an upcoming field is scientific writing. So after BSc, you could get a job as in scientific writing, but at a lower level. After that, uh, there are various, various job opportunities and uh, academic opportunities um, to further your academic uh, qualifications. One of course is the PhD. So this is sums up your, the various courses that you would uh, follow during your academic journey. Now, for the rest of my presentation, I have a, a few successful scientists who will you know, share their work, their journey through short videos. They will tell you about the courses they took. So pay attention to that. The institutes they studied in, they will tell you the job opportunities they have. And they'll also give you some kind of guidance with respect to uh, you know, the fulfillment of your future careers. So pay good attention to them, note down the details because these are very valuable inputs. Just one clarification, all the, the scientists that will speak to you are all alumni of St. Xavier's Mumbai. Most of them are my students, but the reason I chose them was one, I know them I know their success and I felt comfortable to approach them for help. And I'm very grateful to them for, you know, so um, they were very generous in their response despite very, very hectic schedules. But before we go to that, let me give you a recipe for success. The main ingredients are Dream big. You know, dream. Realize that you have the ability, you have the potential, you can achieve things. Do not think small. Dream big. Of course, you can't just dream. Our dreams will come true if we have the courage to pursue them, says Walt Disney. And I fully agree with him. You have to have passion and grit when while making your dreams come true. Sincere hard work is part and parcel of your success in the biological sciences. And I would think of any field. And then I have the development of the five C's. What are these five C's? The first is creativity. You have to learn to think out of the box, to think of creative solutions. Don't restrict yourself to just what you read and what you study. The second C is critical thinking. You must try and an analyze anything and everything that comes your way. And once you have done that, you've understood the concept. The next C is concept application. Apply these concepts to, you know, real world solutions. Now, I don't want you to wait till you're in your career to do this. I want you to do it from today, right through your education journey. You have to be creative. You have to think critically. You have to learn to apply the concept, concept knowledge that you have to real world situations. These are skills you have to keep on developing for them to flower out when you have, when you're in your career. And the next C is communication. I cannot overstress the importance of communication in today's world, both oral and writing. Creative writing is very, very important. The ability to tell a story. Uh, you know, 
you are often given opportunities to develop these skills. How I'm sure you know that even in school, you've been asked to make presentations. Definitely in college, students are told to make presentations, to write assignments. But what happens is most of us do not realize that these are opportunities to develop ourselves to grow. We often see the, these as boring tasks. So we, uh, you know, you can, we, I mean, students even plagiarize and uh, they, uh, or they just do it in a hurry and they've lost these opportunities. Please use all the opportunities to develop your skills because you grow thereby, you le learn from mistakes, you learn from what others are doing only if you are aware that you should be developing these skills. So please use every opportunity that comes your way. And the last C is care for the other. Care for less advantaged, care for less abled, care for creative, uh, for your natural, all the environment and uh, God's creation. Do develop these various C's. And now I start with the presentations. Okay, now in uh, biological science, a very important area is research. Okay, a very important career option is research. And so we have Dr. Ritvik Savarkar who will share his journey. Hi everyone. My name is Ritvik Savarkar. I am a director of research at the MRC or Medical Research Council. Institute at University of Cambridge, United Kingdom in Cambridge. Um, and my lab works on this very exciting and I think simple question as to how do our cells or our bodies react to the environment? The environment could be temperature change, it could be fever, um, it could be uh, therapeutics or medicines that you take or even SARS-CoV-2 or uh, the infections that you may have. My lab studies how do our cells react to these different environmental stressors. Now, I grew up in Bombay uh, when it was still called Bombay, I think. And um, I had fantastic science and maths teachers, which is where I think my interest uh, at school um, uh, started in science and biology and physics and mathematics and so on. So when I finished my 12th standard um, at Ruparel College, uh, the typical question was, are you going to do medicine or engineering? And I'm sure many of you are going through a similar sort of uh, uh, question. My answer was that I really didn't want to do medicine or engineering. I had all the marks in the 12th standard to do either of them, but I really was excited by doing something different, by studying something at a fundamental level, which may not be applicable to human beings immediately. So I enrolled for a bachelor's degree, a BSc degree at uh, St. Xavier's College. And I still remember the, the interview of uh, to get to BSc. Uh, I was told that, why are you wasting a seat of a BSc student? You're obviously going to go for medicine. And I said, no, I really want to study BSc. Uh, many years later, I did get a BSc degree in microbiology. Uh, and I think that time of doing bachelor's for three years in St. Xavier's College in the Department of Microbiology was uh, really the pivotal time in my career uh, for several reasons, but uh, definitely one of the important reasons is I had very, very exciting, interesting teachers, uh, such as Ma'am Amonkar, who was at that time head of the department, who uh, really stimulated discussions and asked the right questions and allowed us to do all sorts of things in the lab. Um, I also did some research projects at that time called as honors programs. Uh, projects where you could do, um, you could ask questions that are really beyond the curriculum. That was very exciting because I could just think about a question and I could uh, answer those by doing very simple experiments. At that time, uh, during my bachelor's degree, I also had the opportunity to go to uh, summer internships uh, at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. This was the first place where I really got exposed to first class research where I participated in research labs with PhD students and postdocs. Uh, and I simply enjoyed those few months of summer holiday time where I used to work in the lab. Uh, and I think that was the time when I decided this is for me. I really enjoy doing what I was doing at that time. 
So I enrolled myself after finishing my bachelor's, I uh, went straight for PhD. Uh, it's called integrated PhD, so it's master's and PhD combined at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore, where I worked with a beautiful amoeba called Dictyostelium discoidium. Um, it was thrilling to observe things of this amoeba under the microscope. And I was uh, again convinced that I took the right decision in my career. So I went on um, after finishing my PhD uh, to do a, what is called as a postdoctoral research um, at ETH in Zurich in Switzerland, where I worked the first time where I started working on food flies and Drosophila. After about three, four years in Switzerland, um, it was uh, luckily enough successful that I uh, was um, allowed to start my own lab in Germany at the famous Max Planck Institute, uh, which is where I started working on epigenetics or a layer of genetic uh, regulation that is beyond the DNA sequence, uh, which is for another, uh, which the explanation of which is for another day. But in terms of So uh, many, many interesting things um, in the last few years, but if you are at that stage of three, four uh, things that you might want to become, try and catch hold of somebody in that try and talk to them. See what typical to be a group leader in Cambridge. What do you do every day? What does it consist of? How, what are your high points and low points every week? Um, that gives you about, about an impression about what it would be if you were in those shoes, if you were to become uh, that individual, that person. The third thing would be to try and uh, try out an internship uh, at any of these locations or any of these professions. You might want to become a musician, uh, go to a music studio and see if you can spend a month, half a month, a week or so, just to get a feel of what it is to, to be in there rather than uh, getting feedback from people from outside. So that always helps so you can make an educated decision about your own self. Would you like to be in, in that studio, for example? Is that something that you can decide only after having been there for a few times, uh, hopefully uh, two, two or three different places? Finally, the last thing that I always say is that whatever you choose to do, do it with your best efforts. Put in all your hard work because that's what is the most important part. The opportunities will come to you your career doors, career options will open up. If you're hardworking, I'm sure success will be yours and many more things will just come to you uh, and you can choose whether you want to uh, go place A, place B or what have you. With that, I hope I've given you some sort of a feeling for what it is uh, that I have gone through and what I learned from my own um, situation. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me through Ma'am Amonka. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay. So now the next speaker is Arinjai, Dr. Arinjai. He has shared a video that he prepared during his PhD days. Of course, now he's completed his PhD, but I'd like to add that Dr. Arinjai was part of the team that isolated the COVID-19 virus in the early days of the pandemic. Hi, my name is Erin J. Banerjee, and I'm a PhD candidate at the Western College of Veterinary Medicine, University of Saskatchewan. As part of my PhD, I'm studying the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus at Bido Interpac. Interpac is supported by CFI infrastructure and operational support. 
MERS coronavirus is speculated to have evolved in bats and eventually spilled over into camels and humans. Although this virus causes 35% mortality in infected humans, there is no evidence that the virus causes any disease in bats. At Interbac, in collaboration with Dr. Daryl Pazzarano's team, I'm working to identify novel immune responses to this virus in bats. Our studies may enable us to identify similar therapeutic targets in humans, which again may help us design disease intervention and management strategies for humans who are infected with emerging high impact coronaviruses. In this video, which you observed today, was an attempt to quantify the amount of virus by growing them on human and bat cells. This is a, a run through of uh, Dr. Rinja's uh, academic journey and professional journey. I'd just like to add that all the speakers have gone in for a degree course in a after their BSc in an Indian education system. Dr. Arunjai did his master's in the National Institute of Virology in Pune in collaboration with a January 31st. Ma'am, I have someone. What is it, Ma'am? What is it, Ma'am? Thank you, Dr. Amunkar, for giving me an opportunity to speak to the students. So I've had almost around two decades of work experience working in the field of biological products and developing therapeutic applications. Ma'am, just hold on. Ma'am, 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 hold on. Strong leadership, management, interpersonal, and team building. I've been trying to speak in development in order to meet the objectives and goals of the to achieve these objectives, I've been managing R and D teams, product development efforts, and we've been transferring successful products to the manufacturing process, facility, and implementing the latest technology. We always try to improve the yields and improvement in the manufacturing processes and streamlining processes in line with international practices and norms. My academic journey started from Xavier's in zoology biochemistry on this program. And during my stint at Xavier's, I had, we had excellent professors who go us towards research. I got interested in toxicology and I started doing some experiments in the lab with the professors then. On completing my graduation course, I got onto a merit seat. I was uh, in Bombay, Manipal, Lamadnagar for the biochemistry course. Finally, I ended up choosing KM Hospital because it was closer to my house. Then finally, we went on to uh, do post-graduation. I joined uh, KM Hospital and I was interested in research. So I got into Cancer Research Institute and DIFR and finally ended up doing Drosophila Genetics. During my uh, study, uh, one of my teachers informed me that you know there was a job vacancy at Maraxilans and Maxims and they were looking at a student training. So what I did was I went and gave an interview and uh, I started working uh, for Maraxilans and Maxims. So my initial work involved uh, in the field of diagnostics, it involved protein purification, preclinical research and assay development. I was happy and to work as a student and was very, very successful and I managed to develop a product within six months. This company was really growth oriented and supported my career. The directors as well as the mentors, my immediate boss uh, was very helpful and they helped me pursue my dream to get registered for a PhD program at GS Medical College. So in 2009, I was able to complete my PhD in clinical biochemistry and my topic was on snake venoms and development of antibodies and antidotes for different fractions of venom proteins. Speaking about the core work-related job roles and opportunities, the biological pharma industry is segmented into multiple uh, verticals. One of the verticals being monoclonal antibodies, others being vaccines or recombinant hormones, proteins, cellular-based biologicals, gene-based biologicals, and there are many applications if you uh, work towards in each of these uh, target verticals. They could be cancer, infectious diseases, autoimmune diseases, or any other applications. So there's no such thing as a typical career path in the pharma or healthcare industry. 
So jobs in the industry, there are many, many jobs in the industry. You can go and get into pharmacovigilance, high-end research and development. Graduates are appointed by the government as drug inspectors and drug analysts. Hospital, I also hire many, many students and young, young joinees, entries into various roles of testing or be it in analyzing various biochemical parameters. So apart from working for the drug manufacturing industry, there is also the food and beverage industry and there is a scope in the chemical industry or the drug control organizations. A large number of graduates and postgraduates and diploma holders in fact go on to become sales representatives. Some of them specialize in clinical research and bioinformatics. Another option is to go on and get your master's degree and uh, you can go on to teaching. Some of them even can join on to uh, and have their own chemistry shop and get into medicine. I was able to work on multiple projects. For example, in the field of immunology, I was able to raise antibodies. I was able to do protein purification. Knowledge also came. developing vaccines. My role because when it came to formulating proper feed, optimum concentration of various nutritional parameters with respect to veterinary nutrition in the animals in which I was developing antibodies. My cell biology background helped me in my work in cell therapy for cancers and transplant. My skill sets in virology in fact helped me develop assays on several viral proteins. And knowing the cell-based assays, flow cytometry, immunochemical techniques helped me in the development of biotech drugs at the end of it. My basic knowledge in zoology actually really helped me. I was able to do a lot of preclinical studies on animals, rats, mouse, rabbits, guinea pigs and monkeys. Some of the things which I learned when I was working were engineering and design concepts and this helped me in designing of air handling units, water systems, critical equipment such as isolators, designs and their validations. The public speaking skills which uh, I had uh, imbibed during my exposure at Malhar and various events organized by Xavier's helped me in the overall development as an individual. I was able to represent at multiple international and national level government regulatory bodies and WHO and even speak to key opinion leaders, doctors. I could market and talk to key opinion leaders about our product. And also all this knowledge was helping me in understanding the pulse of the industry and technical concepts of my product, which helped me finally in brand design. I was able to publish a lot of papers in reputed journals, national and international for making guidelines for the pharma industry. My final take home message for the students is, whatever you decide to do in life, make sure you excel in it and it should make you happy. There are few points which you should know when you start developing your career. Be very, very conscious of your time. Choose your mentors very carefully. Be very flexible and ready for change. In the current age, you need to be very, very flexible so that you can move from one field to another. Be very respectful to your colleagues, seniors, support staff and vendors. It goes a long way in building relationships. And always, in whichever job you end up doing, think like an entrepreneur and in whichever role you are. All the best. Okay, I let me, before we go on, let me apologize for that uh, disturbance or interruption that we heard a little while ago. I think this is the negative aspect of Zoom meetings. Uh, so I did not really introduce uh, Dr. Alvin. He is a success in the pharmaceutical industry. So besides research, another very important aspect in your career journey would be working in a pharmaceutical uh, company. He works, as he just mentioned, in Bharat Serums and Vaccines. And I think he gave you a very good idea of his journey, his work, and the job opportunities available. 
Now, another aspect would be to use your expertise in biological sciences in an applied field. And that is what Dr. Shailicha Rabindran has done as a regulator. Let's listen to her story. Hi, everyone. My name is Shailicha Rabindran. I'm a graduate of St. Xavier's College. I did my bachelor's and master's in microbiology from Xavier's, and then I went on to do my PhD in microbiology from uh, the University of Alberta in Canada. After that, I moved to Orlando, Florida, where I uh, then worked at the University of Florida. I worked in a plant virology lab, uh, and I didn't realize at that time I was going to be working with a highly respected, world-renowned plant virologist. So working on molecular biology, plant viruses, a lot of basic research, but also um, engineering um, the plant virus to express foreign proteins in plants published a lot of papers, I filed a few patents. But then I realized that I, I think I was uh, enjoying um, applied research more than basic research. And so a collaborator friend told me that they were setting up a new research center in Delaware and whether I was interested in joining, they were going to be producing therapeutics and vaccines in plants using plant viruses right down my alley. So I said, yeah, sure, why not? So I. Uh, I applied for the job, I got it, and um, then I worked there. I led a, uh, led a lab of about six to eight scientists. We got funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, working on developing vaccines in plants against, say, the flu virus, the trypanosomiasis, malaria, protozoa, plasmodium. Um, <clears throat> and I also produce human growth hormone in plants. And uh, we did clinical trials as well. And then I was there for about eight to 10 years. And then I you know, thought it's time to move on. So I found a US Department of Agriculture in the Arch Health Inspection Services where I am now as a regulator. I never thought I would, uh, regulatory area was something that I would even think about. But having been here now for eight to 10 years, I realized it's really fun. Uh, I, I started off in biotechnology regulatory services, and now I'm in plant protection and quarantine. I'm currently a director here in um, managing pest programs. And um, it's um, a very, very rewarding, fulfilling job. Uh, there's a lot of public service. So you really working a lot with people and uh, trying to help solve a lot of plant health uh, issues. What I want to emphasize is yes, Absolutely, my background, my microbiology background help, has helped me get me here where I am. But it's also important to develop your people skills. So make sure you work well with people, be collaborative, work with the team, develop your leadership skills, and uh, stay the course. Uh, study hard, stay the course, and um, also um, be passionate about what, what you're doing and keep challenging yourself so that you will keep improving and make, keep your job exciting. Vivian has my contact information. So if you need to contact me, please ask her for my information. Thank you. Have a good, fantastic rest of the day. Bye. Okay. Now here we have Dr. Foster, who has used his expertise in biological science, his experience, and and now he's an entrepreneur in New York. So let's hear from him. Hi there, this is Foster. I'm originally from Mumbai, but at the moment I live and work in New York where I lead drug development and strategy for a biotech that focuses on developing therapies for patients with cancer. Uh, my journey in the biological sciences has been shaped primarily by the principles and lessons I learned and picked up from my mentors and teachers over the years. Um, from whom I've learned a great deal. For example, Veronica Rodriguez, my master's advisor at the TIFR, who taught me to think critically before every statement I made. Uh, David Weisblatt, my PhD advisor at the University of California in Berkeley, um, who taught me to question the validity of every detail, no matter how small someone thought it was. Uh, Rhonda Skupta, my postdoc advisor at the NYU Cancer Institute, who encouraged me to follow my passion for drug development in the face of every challenge, no matter how big, 
And finally, Peter, my advisor in health policy at Columbia University in New York, who taught me the value of empathy in addressing human health across the globe. As such, I think it is one's mentors who are the most valuable asset uh, that one can learn from. And I encourage everyone to actively seek those who you think can provide constructive and critical feedback during your formative years. Uh, don't be shy to ask for help and don't be afraid of criticism. In fact, actively seek it. And finally, as a very wise woman, Dr. Vivian Monker once told me as a college student at St. Davis College in Mumbai, that it doesn't matter what you do in your career as long as you do it really, really well. And that advice has helped me tremendously over the years. Uh, and I encourage you all to remember that it's not how clever you are that matters, but really how much you are prepared to work hard that is the main determinant of the privilege of success. Okay. Uh, after listening to their stories, I'd like to tell you that you can come, you can have careers where you have a combination of other subjects with the biological sciences. You can have law. Various students do law and have become successful patent lawyers, regulators. Then there's education. After BSc, you can do a B.Ed. and teach in a school. For college teaching, you need to pass and your and you should pass NET, SCT, that's the national eligibility test or the state eligibility test. A PhD does help. Uh, I let me share that, you know, while listening to all the, my students talk about their journey, I felt a great sense of pride. I felt very emotional. And that really is something, those are the benefits of teaching, let me say. Then, of course, this management. Many students do MBAs after their BSc degrees, and then they get jobs where they combine their knowledge of the biological sciences with management. Journalism and scientific writing is another new area that is quite significant. Uh, you know, after your BSc or MSc, a course in journalism would help, but uh, even uh, so you do scientific writing of companies that are involved in scientific writing. Cactus Communications is one of the organizations that comes to mind that hires you for scientific writing. But various pharmaceutical companies also hire you for scientific writing within their organization. Now we have two young scientists who will share their stories. Uh, the first is Ivan, who did Hi. his BSc in zoology. My name is Ivan Astrid, and I'm a marine biologist. I spent the last six years working on projects that are focused on the conservation of sharks, rays, dolphins, and even whales. It was my passion for marine life that motivated me to pursue this career. But it was not until I began working on these projects that I realized the importance and necessity of such research work. Uh, given that India is a rapidly developing country, these development plans often overlook the impact that they're having on the ecosystems and the species that depend on them. In some cases, we're losing species that we know very little about. So as conservationists, what we try and do is document the biodiversity of these habitats and use our data not to put a stop to development, but help direct and manage it in a way so it has less of an impact on these species and the ecosystems that they depend on. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do in the Andaman Islands as well. Uh, we're trying to identify areas that play an important role in some of the most threatened and understudied marine life. And then use this data to better manage fishing activities and coastal development in these particular areas so it has less of an impact on the population as a whole. Uh, so just to wrap things up, I want to say that if you are interested in a particular field, whether it's marine biology or microbiology, the best way to get an understanding of what the work involves and if you are interested in it or not, is to go out there and get some experience, work on such projects and work with people in the field. Um, yeah, anyway, I hope this helps and best of luck. Yeah, Ivan did his um, master's in marine biology from the University of Pondicherry. And now we have Vinola Williams. 
Hello, I'm Vinola Williams and I'm a trainee biomedical scientist in Cambridge University Hospitals, United Kingdom. Um, I have done my bachelor's in microbiology and biochemistry from St. Xavier's, Mumbai, and I moved to London to do my master's in biomedical science. After my degree, I got a job in the field of histopathology and that is the study of disease in tissues. It's a very interesting field and you get to deal with a variety of diseases, uh, cases of cancers and very rare abnormalities in the human body. My advice for anybody in the field of science is be curious. Be curious, keep asking questions, do your research and try to gain some experience before you actually enter the field learn about it completely and don't give up and you'll get to where you have to be in life and the sciences are a wonderful field and there's a lot of scope and you will have a wonderful time all the best okay i thank all my students for sharing their stories and i wish all of you uh, the very best in your future endeavors, in your career paths. May God bless and guide each one of you. And if you have any queries, get back to me through email. My email is vivian.amonkar. That's V-I-V-I-E-N dot Amonkar at Xavier's dot edu. Vivian.amonkar at Xavier's dot edu. EDU. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for such a wonderful session. And especially because you started off with uh, giving guidance on what are the different streams or the different bifurcations that you can, or the branches that can, you know, that come out of biology, microbiology, and then the stems towards it. So, that was fantastic. And then you moved on to share experiences of research scientists within the industry and people who have made, you know, their name, they've been able to do what they wanted to do. And, and I can tell from the people that I've heard is that it is a fruitful journey because it's not only helping one get what they want from their passion, but also get more remuneration back which fulfills the work and the effort that you put in in those labs so because as as Ritwik said right it's typically right after 12th grade do i take engineering do i take medical that's the typical thing and not many understand microbiology and and i also heard adolf saying that zoology helped him and and sometimes we'll say why are you doing zoology what is the scope that you have but but in this current situation that we are in, and we know the sector has been given a lot of importance because that is what is currently needed. We have so many issues at our hand and we have so much work to do. And these kinds of skills are in shortage uh, and people are realizing it's much more to do in this sector. So thank you first for sharing your experiences, sharing from the teams. And, and then at the end, you also gave us a different perspective of being uh, lawyers, be, you know, who can help in patents, being teacher, being a, a, a regulator, so many other aspects, which is a combination that you could do. So I think all of those were really helpful. And I'm sure once, because this is a recorded session, and once this is gone on YouTube, uh, on the MGP channel, I'm sure there are many people who are gonna take a look at it and find this session so much fruitful and helpful because uh, it is one of the sessions where it has been listening from multiple peoples on their experiences and from different parts of the world, which says that it's going to be an international exposure. But yeah, as you said, right, the recipes that you gave, right, to success, it helps me also as a, as a person that I'm working that, you know, okay, I need to do all of this to get more to my field. So it's not just for a student, it's for everyone because you can connect it. And I liked one of the things that you said, you know, you need to be creative. You need to care. 
you know these are two things which are so important because you need to think out of the box but you need to also make a balance on caring for what you do towards the society and how you can contribute so all of that for all of that thank you we have a few more minutes before we end the session and um, uh, i have a few questions that i've received from the chat so i'm going to quickly to take on the few sessions a few questions ma'am and then we can end the session yep. so the first question is that uh, that's uh, that's asked is about the difference between biological science and microbiological from a layman perspective okay biological uh, sciences encompasses all living organisms the entire thing plants animals humans and microbes microbiology will basically concentrate on microbes and their interactions to plants animals and humans but we are basically studying the microbes Uh, you know everything the cell biology their metabolism their genetics okay their disease potential and of course it's related to plants animals and uh, humans so biological science is the umbrella under which you have microbiology okay there were another two questions two questions which were related to remuneration one question which was about saying that do i need to do a phd because most of the people that spoke here were phd students and only when i do a phd will i be able to access to that kind of exposure international remuneration the other question was that how long in my career would i need to take off to get to a good salary which helps me have a good lifestyle so two questions because everybody wants to pursue a career to be able to be self sufficient so maybe from that perspective see uh, how let me uh, answer the first the second question first how long it really depends on what you do like i have students who straight after their bsc did their mba and went into careers that paid them you know they're all over the globe in consultancies with uh, you know combining management with the biological sciences and i'm sure they get a very good package okay so that's just two years down the line right uh, but if uh, on the other hand if you choose and that that's why it's all about your passion i believe success is doing what you love okay uh, i always say that yes money is important you need some you need money but it's not everything so some people may feel that you no know, this management and consultancy is not my uh, you know it's it's not my niche it's not something that i love doing so like ritwik said ritwik he was in love with research from the day he entered my department and he used to he as he said he used to spend his summer vacations in the institute of science bangalore doing research that was his high point of his vacation so then he followed research now i would think that for ritwik getting that big packet took a, took a little longer than those who did mbas and went into uh, employment you know so it really uh, there is a difference now do you have to do a phd no there are various uh, careers that you could it de all depends on the career you choose do you want to make a combination can you could do law there are very successful patent lawyers you could go into scientific writing again that's i you know i know so many of my students who are doing very well in this field which you could do after an msc but you know for some amount of expertise i would like to stress this for some amount of expertise in the biological sciences you must do at least an msc okay just uh, at the point of a bsc you're not a you know a biological scientist so if you want to be a biological scientist at least an msc is necessary and a phd is useful um a question relevant to education pursuing education within a country india yeah within india any institutes that you recommend is another question that has come up that could be helpful to do more in genetics or virology virology is something which has come to us yet virology national institute of virology in pune it's the best Mm -hmm. so uh, in uh, for you know genetics is done um, 
it's like one of just as i said cell biology is a basic uh, subject of course you have a specialized emphasis in genetics but if not at a certain level when you are doing biological science you have to study the genetics of whatever you do okay. okay genetics would be something you would do if you were a biological scientist whatever be the area in which you are working in yeah so any other institutes ma'am that you recommend you've said one institute which is the university no for virology i would think there's only one Na when you do very specific uh, virology work national institute of virology pune okay good fine so i hope the questions are being answered as they come to me and people make use of these questions because i think virology is something that has been a buzzword for yeah. many now yeah. and it's good that you know we have some scientists moving in this direction yes um, the other question is that uh, it's very specific it's it says that many a times when you take biology even biology as a topic in your um, in your career right people look down on you and say why are you doing biology you want to cut animals i'm just adding to the question right but the question was specific in saying when we take biology itself people question us that what is the exposure that you have uh, can you guide us more on the exposure or the parts uh from your perspective okay first about this looking down on biology <laughs> i think the pandemic will have changed most people's views about it the everyone i meet now are, talks about virology and immunity and genetics and vaccines and the administration of vaccines and side effects and the various messenger rna and adenovirus they you know everyone throws words at me all over the place so you know taking biology i think is no longer i i don't think people would look down upon it but there are you know the i i don't know what, you know to explain the uh, you know plethora of you know opportunities that are available i could go on for another hour there is uh, you know immunology and genetics and drugs now you have personalized drugs which combine drug discovery your bioinformatics and you know there is and you have you have so many things genetics and what should i say tell them to write to me about everything and i will give them a one hour talk on this <laughs> yes so thank you for all this information Uh, ma'am i i think that was the last question i'm just asking the crowd if there are any more questions and we will wait to hear if there is any more questions if no more questions we are good to, to close the session for today uh however before we get there i must say that it has been a very insightful session a very eye opening session especially for people uh who are not aware who are very naive in you know into even understanding from a career perspective right and what should i do i want to do something in sciences but what do i do i think this is a very good session and i must say your preparation and hard work show because uh you have really planned your session keeping in mind like you said you need to tell a story you wanted to tell a story to us say this is what you could do this is what i wanted to share from the people who've done it from hear them hear the people who've experienced it first hand and then these are the combinations that you do but for all overall you also package it with the success tips to make it all happen you may want to do things but without being consistent because without the success tips that you shared you're not going to get there so that was a whole package that you delivered so I think that was really nice for all of us to hear and I'm sure there are many people who are going to write to you because even in the previous sessions we've heard I guess speakers share the questions that came to them so I am really looking forward to people to reach out to you and also learn and hear from this this session is recorded and will be on the YouTube channel so people who want to have a look and share it with others who couldn't make it today please do so and um, any last thoughts ma'am before we close out today uh again you know i this is my uh, very strong belief that success is all about being 
happy with your what you're doing your work you know um, you have to get because it's not it's a lifetime decision you have to get up every morning and want to get to work whether it's work from home or going out to work you have to get up and want to work and when you're you know you're looking at 30 40 years it makes a difference so be passionate follow your passion and you'll surely be a success yes so the go getter attitude yeah the go getter attitude will help, will help and thank you for your blessings as well um, thank you for taking the time and coming onto the session and i also want to thank alistair to help us to send uh, to help us you know with the session and we're looking forward to more such sessions to come thank you so much ma'am and thanks anubhya and we are really help, really grateful for you to put in your efforts towards the society and towards helping the people and getting information out. I'm really, I'm, I can tell you that people will love this session, especially because of the way it went. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And have a good rest of your day, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye to all. Bye. All the best. Yes, bye.